Namaste. Welcome, Mary Jane Kasliner, Yoga Feng Shui Lifestyle Master. So today I want to um, go over a pose known as Eight Angle Pose, Ashavakrasana. And the reason why I want to discuss this pose is, um, for one, I'm incorporating it into my yoga classes this week. And secondly, I am doing so because now that we're entering um, solidly into uh, beyond the first week of November, we have transitioned from the archetype energy of the dog into the pig. And so with this system of um, feng shui and um, four pillars of astrology, the pig energy is located in what we call the northwest portent or direction. And so that then picks up um, from the trigram of what we uh, call qian. And there is this heavenly guidance, this potential abundance, and this striving to open up the crown chakra shushushita. And when we open that, we open that to grace. So it's about working through the higher levels of um, oneself. We come back to the pig energy, and if we think about that animal itself, it's very close to Mother Gaia or Mother Earth. And it actually is very, very strong, and it perseveres to really get down into the earth and get muddy and look for the treasures. The treasures would be the nourishment. So in other words, it is calling for us to get down, get back to our roots, stay connected to our lineage. Um, family obviously is our lineage. And also outside of our immediate family, we're talking about the human family. So that lineage of man coming into um, physical being from spirit. And so when we work with these two energies, which I'm referring to getting down into the roots or the root base muladhara, and then working with the energy of the crown shashushita, which comes by way of the positioning uh, of the pig archetype energy in the Northwest portent, uh, we begin to open up to grace. So these two points work together. They're polarities and all things work in polar opposites uh, not only in the human body, but in the universe. And so that brings me to this pose, eight angle pose, which is named after the sage um, uh, Astravaka. And the story has it that when he was in his mother's womb, he began to gain the wisdom from the Vedic teachings through his father um, preaching them. And so one day while he was still in the womb, he picked up on a mistake that his father had made through these teachings and he made it known. And his father was very insulted by that. So he essentially cursed his son in saying that he would be born with eight different deformities. And hence we have this pose called eight angle pose it's not a very pretty pose, and there's a lot of different angles in the body from, you know, the chest and the arms and, and the knees and the legs and the ankles and so on and so forth. So, um, Ashtavakra uh, grows to be a, a very patient man, and he works through um, essentially the chakras to reach a state of grace, okay? So working towards higher self. And so he knows where his roots come from and he stays very grounded to his lineage. But at the same time, he understands to rise to grace. And so this month, it's very important that we as humanity stay connected to our lineage, our roots, that which brought us in from the spirit realm into physical matter. And to work through or go beyond um, the ahamkara or the ego so that we may move into grace and in doing so then there is true unification not just unity because we decide to agree to agree on something but rather unity through the grace of god okay so with this pose 
it does require that your hips get warmed up a bit so you may want to uh, extend uh, we'll, we'll say one leg out so we'll take the left leg and we can come into a half happy baby pose here so grabbing to the outer edge of the right foot in this case and just begin to kind of wash that hip okay maybe take some circular motions here to ease it and maybe in the opposite direction and so once you kind of feel you're getting the hip a little bit warmed up you can come into a seated pigeon so begin to bring the shin across the front of your chest maybe hug it in a little bit here maybe taking the edge of that right foot into the eye of the left elbow and really hugging in so you you might begin to feel a big opening to the outer right hip here the gallbladder chain beginning to awaken and so from here and maybe you'll just stay here for a while um, you can begin to actually round the spine and bring in order to bring that uh, knee up on the shoulder you'll need to round the spine a bit and then go ahead and place your hands hug the belly to back spine the left ankle under the right and then just breathe out so good chaturanga arms and lift up and out and it sweeps across so once again not so pretty of a pose but it's all these different angles and maybe coming back into your sukhasana maybe taking a sufi circle to just kind of ease that energy out a little bit you can always use your blocks in this pose too so your hands would be lifted up onto the blocks to bring uh, mother gaia or mother earth up that's also an option uh, in this pose so we'd like to get the other side in so we'll extend the right leg out here and take the left hand to the outer edge of that left foot so here we go in the happy baby um, half happy baby pose here and so begin to you know wash out that hip a little bit clockwise counterclockwise maybe side to side a little bit and then drawing the shin in towards your chest so bringing it across into this seated pigeon pose and really hug it up really feel the length first here you know it, it, bringing everything in and keeping that belly drawing back to the back spine good and then to make room for that shoulder you'll need to begin to round the spine like we do in our cat pose maranchasana and then make some space for that uh, knee to come up onto that shoulder here the hands get placed hug the belly back spine hook the ankles and then go ahead and ride the wave out to the side good and then sweep it back into your sukhasana maybe taking another sufi circle around here and coming back so it's a pose that you can begin to explore and recognizing that we have to come in and back to our roots to do this self-study if you will to begin to rise up into grace Namaste.